Welcome, welcome to Python Memory Management and Tips. This is a pretty unique course. We're going to dive deep into the internals of Python to understand how it works, to make your code more efficient, and make it faster. I feel like Python memory management is a bit of a black art. We use Python all the time, but most people don't really understand how Python memory works, how are Python objects structured actually in memory, in the runtime. What does the reference counting part do? What does the garbage collection part do? We've heard maybe even you can avoid using the garbage collector altogether. It's a bit of a black art. Well, maybe not this kind of black art. Maybe this kind of wizard. <laughs> maybe this is the kind of black art, the programmer side. But if you really want to know how Python memory works, this is the course for you. We're going to have a balance of high-level conversations about algorithms. We're going to dig into the C Python source code, and we're going to write a ton of code to explore these ideas and see how they work in practice. So why should you care about memory management in Python anyway? Isn't it just going to work the way it's going to work, and we just have to live with it? Well, you'll see there's actually a ton that we can do to work with it or even change how it works. Here's a simple little program. It's running Python, running one of our applications. And it was fine, but then a little bit later, it wasn't fine. Now it's using 719 megabytes. That seems bad. Maybe we should do something different. We're going to learn a whole bunch of amazing techniques that would allow us to keep this memory usage much lower. And we're going to dig in so you understand exactly the trade-offs you might be making and where these costs come from, how Python is doing its best to get the most out of the memory that we're using, and so on. Not only will you come away with an understanding, but we're going to dig in and get some design patterns and some tools and techniques that you can proactively use to make your program look more like the one on the left and less like the one on the right. Now, when you think about memory management and making our code more memory efficient or understanding how the garbage collector and reference counting works, you might think this is to make our code use less memory, to make the memory required smaller. But it also will have a side effect. It will make our code faster. Our code, Python, will have to do less garbage collection events Potentially, it's using less memory, so less swap space, maybe better cache management, but also just some of the design patterns and some of the aspects of Python that are not frequently used, but we're going to bring into it will actually make our code quite a bit faster for some really interesting use cases. This is sort of a general performance thing with a concentrated focus on memory. Let's talk about what we're going to cover in this course. We're certainly going to talk about Python memory management. But there's actually three distinct and useful things we're going to cover here. So three separate chapters. We're going to talk about how Python works with variables and look behind the scenes in the CPython source code to see what's really going on when we work with things like strings or dictionaries or whatever. We'll get a much better understanding of the structures that Python itself has to work with, which will be important for the rest of the discussion around memory management. We're also going to talk about allocation. People often think memory management, cleanup, you know, garbage collection, reference counting, and so on. And yes, we'll talk about those things, but Python actually does really interesting things around allocation and a bunch of cool design patterns and data structures and techniques to make allocating memory much more efficient, which then lead into making reference counting more efficient as well as garbage collection. So Python has two ways to clean up memory. We're going to talk about them both when either of them come into action. We'll also write a lot of code to explore that. The data structures that you choose to represent your data in your application can dramatically vary in how much memory they use. So we're going to take the same data and look at it through the lens of storing in a bunch of different types of data structures, arrays, lists, dictionaries, classes, and even pandas data frames and numpy arrays, and see what the various trade-offs are around these different data structures. Once we get to talking about functions, you'll see that there are some really powerful and simple design patterns that can dramatically make our code faster and more memory efficient. So we're going to look at some really cool ways to make our functions use a little less or a lot less of the memory that we're using. We're also going to look at classes because storing data in classes is super important in Python. And maybe you're going to create a list of classes, a whole bunch of them and so on. And you can have a lot of data there. So we're going to talk about different techniques we can use when we're designing classes in Python to make it much more efficient, both in memory and it turns out a nice little consequence in speed as well. 
Finally, we're going to do some detective work. Once we understand all of these things, we're going to take a script and we're just going to run it through some cool tools, try to understand from the outside what exactly is happening in our application, how Python is using memory. We're going to create some interactive web views of this data. We're actually going to create some graphs, all kinds of stuff. So we're going to use some really neat tools to do the detective work to understand how our program is working and where we should apply some of these techniques that we've learned previously to make it even better and faster. That's what we're going to cover. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be hands-on, but also some high-level conversations. I think you'll get a lot out of it, and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you.